one. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, everybody. We're going to sing this song because I don't know about you, but when I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt. thankful right now, huh? Why are you thankful, Pastor? Well, he woke me up. I tell you, that, that's good news. He woke me up. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Here we are at Wesley United Methodist Church, Austin, Texas, on this last Sunday of July, July the 25th, 2021, we are in the sanctuary here, amen, God's house, giving him all the praise and giving him all the glory. But you know what? You got your sanctuary where you are right now. You are at home in your sanctuary. You might be in your living room. Anybody in the bedroom? <laughs> Anybody at the kitchen table, the countertop, on the couch, in their lounging chair, that, that's your sanctuary right now, huh? And you're going to just have a praise break right where you are. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Thanks be to God for the things that he has, has done. 
Anybody been blessed this week? I say, has anyone been blessed this week out there, huh? Oh, if you've been blessed, you ought to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to, but, but you did. You blessed me this week. Amen. Woo, my, my. Glory, glory. Come on now. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, oh yeah, free glory. I missed church last Sunday. <laughs> I was out there in California. They didn't go to church. <laughs> Amen. So I got to try to make up for it. <laughs> Amen. All right. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, we are blessed. Better than blessed. We don't mind telling the world that we're still blessed through it all. We have learned to depend upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even more so during this last year, the two years, amen. I don't know about you, but I've had a, a spiritual awakening. Huh? A spiritual awakening, amen, huh? A spiritual renewal, maybe I'll meet to say that, huh? Because, you know, you just been through something. Y'all haven't been through nothing, but I have, amen, huh? And, and just drawn me as a preacher even closer to God, huh? Huh? That I, I just feel like lifting him up even more so. For he said, if I be lifted up, Jesus says, I will draw all men. Woo! Unto me, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, saints, on this Sunday, you know, it's I usually light a, the white candle. And I think, you know, I always give a, a name to what I'm lighting it for, what the focus is of lighting that candle. And on this Sunday, Sunday morning, July the 25th, 2021, the white candle. I'm going to light it, light it in memory and in honor 
of those who have had to deal with sickle cell. Huh? In honor, memory of those who have had to deal with sickle cell. Folks, a lot of times we don't lift things up. But one thing I know, sickle cell comes into the black community. It's hit us. And and as a race, it's primarily, that's who it hits, us as African Americans. And they have to deal with something every day, those who have sickle cell. Every day. And they are in and out of the hospital several times during the year. Yes, they are. And so, you probably know of someone just this week who have died of sickle cell who have had to go into the hospital for several days and come back, then go back again, huh? We want to remember that, and we want us as a people to continue to lift up those people who are dealing with sickle cell and that a cure be found. I don't know if it can, but we want to pray that one can be found. Amen. And that those who are dealing with it have access to medications, that they can afford it, and they can receive the proper medical care. We light this white candle. This white candle this morning. In memory and honor of those who have had sickle cell and passed and those who have it now and are dealing with it daily that they will find comfort and strength and the faith to carry on. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, God, help them, Lord. Only some things, Lord, you have to step in, amen. You know how some people, you be saying, why are they crying? They look good on the outside, but you don't know what people are going through. You don't know my story. You don't know my story. And those with sick of cell, you don't know their story. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer time, prayer time, prayer time, prayer time, prayer time. Prayer time, prayer time. I know two or three people at least stand in need of prayer. Because I'm one. I don't know who the other one might be, but I know I'm one. I stand in the need of prayer. And someone is going through something. You haven't told us, but... You and the Lord are dealing with it. You know, sometimes you can't tell people, but you have told Jesus. What a friend I have in Jesus. I can take everything to the Lord in prayer. Oh, I carry things to him all day and all night now. Amen. Sickness. Anybody had a little pain out there this week? Felt a little pain here or there? Rheumatism? Arthritis, huh? Thyroid, diabetes, cancer, had a stroke, recovering from a heart attack, had a procedure, had surgery this week. Anyone I fail like that? I don't know about you, but when I was flying 35,000 feet up in the air, I was sitting up there praying. Help. The lady next to me on the plane said, what, what's what are you saying? <laughs> I'm just praying. Amen. Let the Lord will keep this plane up. Amen. Woo. Glory. Keep praying, church. Put those names in the chat that you want us to pray for. Those names, people, individuals you want us to pray for. Put their names in the chat. We will be praying for them all week. I'm here every day. Air conditioning is back on. I'm over here in the church now praying. Amen. Praying for you daily. 
Keep praying. You know who you are. You know I was sick and shut in. You know that list. Well, you got some sick and shut in your own family. Lift them up. As far as our church family, only one I know who is in the hospital is Sister Billy Nell Chambers. Sister Billy Nell Chambers is still in the hospital. Pray for her. Pray for her son, Melvin. Pray for other family members who are looking and checking on her daily. Be mindful that our own reverend, oh God, today, our own pastor here at the church, Reverend Rosie, Rosie Johnson. While I lift her up in prayer, she lost a sibling past Friday, Friday morning. Reverend Rosie Johnson lost a brother to death. 73 years old, really that's still young in today's time. We don't have others that lost a sibling. You know, how you, you know how it is when you lose a sibling? A brother, a sister. Someone lost a mother, a father, a cousin. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it takes me a while to rebound when I lose a loved one. And I need the guidance and strength for comfort of the Holy Spirit. Reverend Johnson, we are praying for you and your other siblings as you prepare for a homegrown service for your brother, your brother Robert Earl Jackson. Robert Earl Jackson. And that service will be down in Houston, Texas, and she will be letting us know the time and the place and how we can view it. Oh, Lord, be with Reverend Rosie. She has prayed over many of us. And now she and her family needs our prayers. Oh, Lord, you are able. And all the others who are recovering. I know some been in the hospital and out, procedures in and out. You know who you are. Lord, you are able. Thank you. Taking care of our children. Anybody got some children out there? You can't be there with them around the clock. <laughs> huh? You know, sometimes you got to let them go. You know, they're out there on their own now. You can't be there, but you lift them up. Anybody got any grandchildren out there? You have them for a while, but sometimes you got to let them go back to be with their own parents, huh? But you can pray for them, can you? Huh? You can't be there. Hey, man, huh? Oh, I know you love them, but you got to let them go. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Come on, God. Come on, come on, come on. Hear us in our homes right now. Someone is lifting up a name. They're in their bedroom, on their couch. In their chair, they're lifting up a name to you. Someone is taking care of a sick mother. We have any caregivers out there? Any caregivers out there? Looking after a sick one in the family? Or looking after their welfare on a weekly basis? Having to make decisions each and every day for them? Oh, Lord, be with them, help them, give them the strength. It's get difficult at times. Come on, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Oh, Lord. Jesus. 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 The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, Jesus. Our healer, our counselor, our guide, our way maker, Jesus. In the morning, in the noonday, in the evening, I just have to call you Jesus. 
I need your comfort right now, Jesus. I need your compassion right now, Jesus. Walk with me. Let me lean on you, oh God. We are stumbling in this world. COVID-19 is popping back up, reaching higher numbers. Lord, we thought we could defeat it when we got ready, but you have a way of letting us know you can't do anything without me. But with me, all things are possible. Hallelujah. With you, oh God, over 600,000 people in America have died from COVID. Some 4 million people worldwide have died from COVID, Lord. Lord, right now we have found out we can't make it without you. Come on, Lord. Come within us right now. Comfort us. Some have lost loved ones recently. Comfort us, Lord. Sometimes we still have to cry in the midnight hour. Show up and wipe away our tears, Lord. Continue to care for us, Lord. And we in turn will lift you up and say, my God can do anything. Now, as we go throughout this service, be in each and every home right now, you already are. You haven't passed by and left no one untouched. But let them, oh God, just feel your reassuring touch. And they can say, God is here with me. I am not alone. Let them feel your touch. Oh God, touch them. Touch them. Someone needs healing, touch them. Someone needs guidance, touch them. Someone is crying, touch them. Some child is lost, touch them. Some family is torn apart, touch them. Someone is bearing a loved one, touch them. Someone's child is lost out on the street. Touch them, oh God. Someone, oh God, has sick of sail dealing with it right now. Touch them. Woo! Touch them. They just need a touch from you. Take away some of the pain. And in the name of Jesus, we are claiming victory. In the name of Jesus, we are turning things over to you, Lord. We want to feel better, Lord. We want to feel better. Lighten the load. Hallelujah. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come on and Amen. Glory. Yeah.
Kilimanjaro. Oh, Lord. Your name, Lord. Power in your name. Forgiveness and healing in your name. you funny when you're just going around saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> Told you that's what that lady on the plane said. What's you, what you saying? Why you? I'm saying Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, you got to watch it. They'll report you. Amen. When you start doing that. Amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. All right. It's all good. It's all good. Look, look, look. Look, you heard us talk about sickle cell already. Mention that. And we have the president and CEO of the Sickle Cell of Texas, Mark Thomas Foundation, in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. Sister Linda. Wait, amen. I said she's the president and CEO. She's been here to our church several times, amen. She has presented us with a plaque. Y'all still got that plaque on it, amen, amen. And every year, you know, one thing we try to help them with is they have a camp for children. And they call celebration camp. Now, they have not going to be able to go outside. It's going to be a virtual camp. But it's run well for a week, Monday through Friday. It's going to start August the 2nd and end August the 6th. And during the day, they have three sessions each and every day, Monday through Friday. And it's well put together, well run. And as always, when you're doing something good and worthwhile, you need funding. And truly, it's been for us in past years to give them a little, 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 little something, amen, financially, to help them have a top-notch camp. They put bags together, kids going to receive every day, amen, and some of the kids can't afford it, amen. Well, we give them, you know, so they can buy the stuff, materials. Those who want to, we don't want to turn anyone away. And the ages are from 6 to 14, these young kids. And they, they are dealing with issues every day. And they are sick. She can tell you how many we have lost over the last months dealing with this. So we, Wesley United Methodist Church, amen, and friends of, to us here at Wesley, we have made it possible for us to give them a, a love offering, a love donation to this camp that's coming up so they can start putting it together like they, they already started. But you know how you always got some loose ends? Mm-hmm, some loose ends. And uh, I, I asked Sister Wade, I said, Sister Wade, I know I'm getting you this money a little late. Can you still use it? She said, whoa! Yes. <laughs> yes. <Ooh>. yes. <laughs> All right. So, Sister Wade, you will come now. And on behalf of Wesley United Methodist Church, we present you with this donation love offering for your camp that's coming up August the 2nd through the 6th, this check in an amount of $1,000. $1,000. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.
Come on. Amen. Amen. She, she, she said she's going to hook. Ooh, Lord. Ooh. Oh, thank you, darling. Amen. Amen. Like I said, now, uh, we have some friends of the church that gave toward this. Amen. I had a lawyer in town. His law firm gave us some money. I had a retired preacher who sent us some money. And I had a person up in uh, Maryland, a lady, who watches us to send us some money. Amen. Amen. She said, we want to help kids go to camp. And I was one going to camp this year. But we're giving it to you so you can take care of those loved ones, our children who are dealing with sickle cell. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I know she cried. You getting that photo shoot? Amen. Get y'all's cameras. Amen. Wherever those cameras are, we're going to get that after she has a word. Amen. Thank God. All right, Sister Way, you go right here. Pastor, thank you so very much. And to Wesley United Methodist Church and all of those that have so generously and selflessly given to camp celebration. Um, as Pastor mentioned, my name is Linda Thomas Wade, and our founder, my late husband, Pastor Mark, lived with sickle cell disease. We were married, happily married, for 27 years when he passed away at the age of 46 due to sickle cell disease complications. As the pastor mentioned, we have lost too many kids to name. And pastor, I do wanna also thank you for lighting the candle. And I had to wipe the tears from my eyes because just even on last year and this year, we lost five kids. But the work continues, and we are so appreciative. Camp Celebration, as Pastor mentioned, is a week-long camp, and our services include education, support, resources. There is mental health counseling, not just for the children, but for the entire family, mm -hmm. limited resources. And as Pastor mentioned, we we don't charge for any of our services. Yeah. Everything is free. And with camp, we give them all of the supplies that they need, whether it's tablets, food supplies, because we do try to teach them about diet and eating better. And so we just want to say thank you so much for all that you do, you have done, and continue to do. We love you all so much and as pastor also mentioned it does affect primarily sickle uh african americans mm -hmm. and you could be a carrier and not aware that you're a carrier oh and that's the reason why we offer free sickle cell trait testing to let you know yeah. your sickle cell status and our theme on this week is uh, mystery secret agents so these are little sickled blood cells. And so because so many of our kids have suffered strokes, we are going into more depth, teaching them about when they go into the hospital and have different tests, what exactly those tests are. So we're doing mysteries where the kids have to figure out what it is. So we're going to make you an official secret yeah, agent. Right. So here's that T-shirt <laughs> for sickle cell. And it says secret agent. And thank you all so much. We love you. We appreciate you. And God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so Amen. Thank you, God. God bless. All right. All right. All right. It's just nice to be nice. Amen. And I know other groups around town, some of our fraternities and sororities give to the sick of cell of Texas, Mark Trumbull's foundation. I know they give to it and uh, a very worthwhile cause, amen. So uh, hey, someone said, well, you wanna give some more, some of our church members, just send the money here, amen, and I'm, we'll get it to it. We'll get it to Sister Wade and her organizations, all right? Amen, amen, hallelujah, mm. hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. To God. Amen. And Sister 
Sister Wade was saying that that's her, her husband with her. Amen. I don't know if people heard that. Her husband is with her. Amen. The first husband passed. This is a second. And she said both of them were good men. Uh, she said, that's why she said she'd been blessed twice. Amen. The first husband was good, and the second one it is good. Amen. I need to send some of our ladies to talk to you. Amen. And uh, you can help them pick a good man. Amen. All right. That's right. That's right. When a lady can say she got had two good ones. Amen. All right. Amen. All right then. All right, Sister Wade. If you if you need any other help or assistance, uh, let us know, and we'll try to do even a little bit more. Just let us know. Take care of the kids out there. And if uh, I know eventually we said we want to start getting some of our members involved in that camp. Amen. We're going to start getting hands on. Amen. We're going to start getting to that level. All right. Maybe next year. Amen. We'll, all right. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you heard about what we are doing with sickle cell, don't forget now to give financially your tithes and offerings. I say your tithes and offerings. We still need those. We only can do what we can by the funds being there. If the funds are not there, we can't do. You know, people ask me, why are we not doing this? Why haven't we bought this? Amen. Well, now look at here now, you know, that if you're only giving one or two dollars, you know, that, don't, that only goes so far, amen. So uh, come on, let us be generous givers. Generous givers. And uh, it, it makes it easier on, the, on us those who are on the finance, I got Brother Willie Everett up here, the finance chair. See, when the money is funny and running short, the meetings are long. <laughs> Trying to make ends meet, and everybody got to talk, and all of that has to go on. But when we got the money, we in and out in 15, 20 minutes. Hey, Amen. All right. So uh, what I want us to do, come on church people, we're, we're really doing without a lot of fundraisers now. You know, I said, we, we, you know, we, we, we didn't beg for no uh, men's day, uh, old fashioned Sunday school, women's day did, what, seven, 8,000 and uh, you know, and you know, we just not getting a lot from the outside. We got friends of the church who give but basically, it's on us as the members of Wesley United Methodist Church to give our tithes and offerings that we can fulfill all of our obligation and things that we would like to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, you can give online, or you can send it to the church office or the post office box and drop by and let's leave it here in the office through the slot. And uh, we'll see that it gets to where it needs to go to our finance committee. All right. Amen. 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 Let us proceed.
for me in the midnight hour when my daddy died you were there Lord when mother left oh God you was there when I lost my sibling my sister you were there Lord oh I love you Lord When I'm hurting, Lord, in the midnight hour, but you are there. Oh, Lord, yes, you are. When I was without a job, oh, God, you made a way out of no way. Mm, yes, you did, Lord. Oh, you've been an old time God. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you have, Lord. Yes, you Oh, when I was down to my last dollar, you were there, Lord. The check showed up, oh. Someone was there to help me along life's tedious journey. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, yeah. I just want you to know, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yes, yes, Oh, yes, I do. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. God, today. Oh, yes, sir. My, 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 my. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. That being the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Want to make mention also, you know, we had an elder care fan drive. An elder care fan drive in which we collected funds to send the elder care to provide fans for those who are without air fans to deal with this heat. 
Amen. And so far, now, in fact, we, we have sent it in already, and it's probably going to even be more. We have turned over to Elder Care to buy fans $1,500. Fifteen hundred dollars, one thousand five hundred for them to buy fans. Amen. They got to shout. They don't call me three times saying thank you. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. So we responded. Thank you, church members and friends of the church and organizations who have contribute to this and a matching donor and all of that. And like I said, uh, it, it might go up. It might go up, but so far we have turned over to them in $1,500. Thank you, church family, for responding to that appeal as quickly as you did. It was needed now. In fact, we were really running late, amen. Next year, I'm going to get started a little earlier. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, also, let me make mention that you have communication talk about we're going to, going to try to enter back into the church on, what is it, August the 15th in person. You know the numbers went up. Time I sent the letter out, then the numbers went up. <laughs> you know, COVID and that Delta variant of it, you know, got, Satan got into this thing, and amen, in the sense that, you know, we, we haven't been doing all we're supposed to, amen, and some haven't gotten their shots and our vaccine, and, and I know that's a personal decision, amen, but it's, it just makes it hard on everybody, amen, and uh, it makes it hard on, so uh, the numbers are back up, and uh, and we will see whether or not we will come back in on the 15th or not. Depends on where the numbers are. All right? Now, I will let you know August the 8th when I, for our second Sunday service whether or not we can come back in. Because I want us to feel, feel comfortable coming back in. And I know everybody not going to come, but those who would come on the 15th, I, I want you to feel comfortable. All right? And so... If we have to delay it, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. Well, we will be coming back. We just might have to delay it. And we, I know you don't mind being flexible, and, but we'll still be out here having church, amen, like this, hey, Facebook, or YouTube, and all that, amen. So uh, we'll, if we have to carry on a little bit longer this way, you, you will understand, right? Amen, because you know now the children are involved in this thing about who can be vaccinated and all of that comes into it. And, amen. And so uh, you'll be hearing from us at least August 8th for sure, August the 8th, about whether or not we can come back in or will. And I will be consulting with the church leadership. Amen. It's not, it's not a decision on me, but church leadership is, you know, concerned too about whether or not we should come back on the 15th if the numbers stay where they are. I think in the Austin area, we're on stage four as of now. They might go back down to two by the end. Well, I don't know, but just in case it doesn't, you will understand. All right. Okay, okay. Want to share a word? Short word. I want you to go to the epistle now. You got to go to the back of the Bible, 2 John. 2 John. Now you got 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, but we're going to. 2 John. And it's only one chapter. 2 John, and you might want to call it that first chapter, whatever, but it's only one chapter. 2 John, coming down to verse 5 and 6. 2 John, verses 5 and 6. Amen. I will be reading from the new Living Bible Translation, the New Living Bible Translation.
translation. John is speaking. Second John, beginning with verse 5. I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Verse 6, love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another. Just as you have heard from the beginning. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Subject or a theme for for today, for this Sunday, just a reminder. Just a reminder. Just a reminder. Dear hearts, I don't know if some of you are like me, but I'm getting to that stage of life where people have to remind me of things. I'm, 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 I'm probably one of, out of a million maybe, I don't know. But I'm at a stage where I can't remember everything. I mean, somebody tell me something, or I do something, put something somewhere. Not going to know where it is. See, right now, I'm probably going to ask some of you all to where are my keys. <laughs> Y'all have been around me, don't you? Y'all been around me, and I can I get ready to leave here, walk out today. I'm going to say, where, where are my keys? Amen. And somebody has said, we found your keys, Reverend. Amen. Hey. Well, I need a uh, reminder. Sister Linda Thomas Wade. You know, we talked way back in around January about this camp, I think. And, uh, you know, between January and now, a lot has gone on. And, and I know you hadn't heard from me. And, he, and you said, I know you said to yourself, let me call that preacher and remind him because I haven't heard from him and the camp is coming up. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. That. You and you called me, amen. And, and you know, you you didn't come at me that hard. You, how you doing, Linda? All right, everything okay? Yeah. Well, well, you know the camp is coming. Go. Oh yeah, I said good, good. Well, <laughs> we're trying to put things together, Reverend. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we want to get those bags, and you know, we make it for the. Well, yeah. And she said, well, well, Pastor, you know, you did say something about happiness. I said, oh. <laughs> She had to get a reminder call. Isn't that right? A reminder call. And if you keep living, you're going to need some reminder help too. <laughs> hey, hey, Amen. But Paul, I mean, John is saying this in our text, in that 2 John verse 5, he says, I am writing to remind you. <laughs> See? Huh? Christians, we, we have to be reminded also, don't we? Isn't that right? You know. You know that you need to pray, but we sometimes have to remind you to pray, huh? You know you are supposed to give financially, but sometimes we have to what? 
remind you, huh? Well, same thing in our text. John is saying, I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. Now, you would think after all of this time, we would know that. Hmm? But we have to still be what? Reminded. Don't you know it's a lot of hate out there in the world? I don't know if you ever experienced anybody just hating you. You don't even know why. Hmm? People are, are, are just shooting now. to be shooting, I do believe, huh? Huh? They're shooting adults, shooting kids, huh? You have to remind people thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not what? Steal, huh? We have to re remind people at times. And Paul is saying, I mean, John is saying this in our text, that I re re writing just to remind you that we should what? Love one another. Hello, you know, I'm just preaching what all the other preachers preached before me here at Wesley. Someone is going to come after me and going to preach the same thing that I've been preaching and what others have been preaching. But they are just coming just to remind you what thus says the Lord. <laughs> Hello, huh? You got to be what? Reminded. All right. And, and we see that John says there in that fifth verse, this is not a new commandment, huh? But, but it's one we have heard from the beginning. And I remember my parents would always repeat the same thing over and over and over. Mom and Dad, y'all told me that yesterday. Well, we got to tell you again. Isn't that right? Hey, y'all ever had those kind of parents? Huh? They done told you. They, they told the children before you, and they done told the children after you the same thing, but they just got to what? Remind you, huh? 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 They got to remind you and ask you, have you done your homework? Hmm? They got to remind you about that, huh? Uh, and when you get ready to leave the house, they remind you, I don't want you going out there acting a the fool. Amen. Y'all remember that, huh? huh? Now, you already knew they done told you that before, huh? But they always reminded you, huh? Remember who you are representing, huh? Don't let me hear about you doing something, huh? Huh? They will always keep reminding you over and over and over. Hey, man, huh? And I remember my youngest sister, the one now, that she would always tell mama, mama, I hadn't heard it all before, well, I still got to remind you. All right. Well, here now, I want us to see there in verse 6, it says that, John says, he, God, has commanded us to love one another. Well, we got to keep preaching that. Blacks loving blacks, whites loving whites, blacks loving whites, whites loving blacks. We got to keep reminded that we're supposed to, to love unconditionally. Isn't that right? We want to be a Christian, don't we? Lord, I want to be a Christian. Where? In my, in my heart. Now listen up to this. The very essence and nature of God is love. The very essence and nature of God is love. Sister Wade, amen. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 It is in loving others, listen, that we are most like God. Whew, you need to put that down. All right. It's in loving others that we are most like God. God, 
Huh? You, you want people to see God, to see Jesus in you? Well, you, you, you need to start loving. Amen. And Sister Wade, you, you, since you're here, I guess I got to pick on you a little bit more. You said you done had two good, loving husbands. Woo! <laughs> you know, that's enough to make you just, I see now why you jump up and throw up your hands. Amen. Amen. See that? Look at that. She threw it up again. Amen. Huh? Uh, 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 because they, they, they have been like God and that they have been like him and that they have shown love to you and you have shown love to them. Now, you know, Paul says, Paul says, if we go to that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, around about verse 3 in the Message Translation Bible, it says, Paul says these words, if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I have gotten nowhere. Woo. You see that? So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Woo. You, you, you see, if you're doing stuff for show and all that and not, not love, you, 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 you're still what? Bankrupt. Isn't that right? That's what Paul says in that message translation. If I don't, what I believe and what I do, I am bankrupt without Love. Maybe that's what's wrong with the world. We, we, we are just bankrupt because we don't love, huh? Sometimes, you know, look here. I, I was out there, like I told you, out there in California, and the lady approached me and just said, what type of governor do y'all have? I said, what do you know about that governor of Texas? Well, he's on the news. Does he love y'all? <laughs> Oh, now, now, I don't know how, now, now, she was out there, hey, amen, we was out there in Long Beach, hey, amen, and I was out there on the boat, and she, he, I, I, oh, hey, amen, mm-hmm, you, you, you know, you, we can do a lot of things, but we're doing things without what? Love, all right, and if you're doing things without love, you are just what? Bankrupt. Now, listen up, all right, love, love cannot be learned or practiced in isolation. I don't need anyone, I don't need anybody. Leave me alone. I don't need anybody, huh? Well, I just want you to know, love cannot be learned or practiced in isolation. Is that all right? See, what I'm trying to say, you have to be around people if you're gonna show love. Mm -hmm. you, you just have to be around people. You can't isolate, isn't that right? Uh, uh, you, you just got to go around. You, you got to love those children. Just the way it is, man, isn't that right? You, you can't isolate yourself from them, huh? Uh, and you got adults and, uh, with sickle cell. You can't isolate, and that's what I like about your program. You got a program for children, youth, and adults. For the whole family, say, man, huh? You're not isolating yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you say, I got to be around people. Hmm. Well, let me remind you of this, amen. Let me remind you of this. You're going to be around people who you might not enjoy. Uh, just, 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 just a reminder. I just want to remind you. You have to be around people. You know, you got to be around what we call some irritating people. Anybody ever been around at least one irritating person in their life? Just one, amen, that's all right, just one, amen. Huh? You, you just got to be around them, huh? And I, and, I, and I knew it, amen. When I was out there in California, I knew we were gonna get it on, cause that one just gonna irritate them. Who is staying this? I ain't gonna lie to something. Hell broke loose. Amen, amen, amen. You just got to irritate. Amen, huh? All right. Then you got to be around what I call some imperfect people like me. 
Ooh, you know, I, I, hey man, I'm sorry, but hey man, if you're gonna love, you can't love in isolation. Huh? You can't, huh? You got to put it into practice, huh? Uh huh. You you got to deal with imperfect people. Hey man, I'm sorry. You, you, I'm gonna know I'm imperfect. Hey man, huh? Grim Chase, you just keep doing the same thing over and over. You don't do things like the others do. All right. I'm imperfect, but you still got to what? Love. You, you commanded. The text said, he has commanded us to love one another. You got to love irritating people. You got to love imperfect people. You got to love demanding people. Ooh, I know some of y'all got some demanding people around. Huh? Now y'all are in the demanding people are in your families, huh? <laughs> they demanding. Then you got to be around what I call frustrating people. Just always frustrated. But you still got to what? Love. Love cannot be learned or practiced in what? Isolation. Well, and, and this is what we're, what we're getting to today. Just a reminder. This is a point we, we want people to understand. If it, sometimes we act as if relationships are something to be squeezed into our schedule. Mm, now, now, now that's the just the way I'm going today, huh? huh? You know, we got to love one another and we try to be in isolation and all. Sometimes we are acting as if relationships are something that's to be squeezed into our schedule. Hmm. Well, look here. Well, when I left, I told you we were, the family was together, you know. And when we left, you know, we said we got to find time to get together more, huh? Anybody been around us? You start leaving, you know. We we got to find time uh, to get together more, huh? All right. Are we thinking about? Uh, we got to start making time for each other, huh? Yeah, you ever had those type of talks? Yeah, we got to find time about making time for others. All right, huh? You, you, you know, sometimes, you know, look here. In the bed when you see some of your relatives and you look at them and you don't know who they are. Huh? Yeah, 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 you know, they didn't know. Hey, man, I'm looking. Hey, man, I called them by the wrong name. Will you? Hey, man. Look, when you haven't seen anyone in fairness, so y'all got the same thing going on in your family. It's a, these relationships, we go, we're going to get together. We're going to find time, all right? Sometimes we act as if our relationships are something to be squeezed into our schedule. We talk about finding time, about making time for others. But Jesus summarized what matters most in two statements coming out of Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. And the only thing he said is, these two statements, what matters the most is to love God and to love people. Loving God and loving people. Just a reminder, huh? Uh -huh. You, you got to love me, huh? Imperfect. As I am, you got to what? Love. Isn't that right? Right. Just a reminder. This statement. Relationships. Relationships. Not things are what really matter in life. Put that down, huh? Relationships. Not things are what really matter in life. See, that during this, during this uh, pandemic, hey, man, we have had time to be around people more so than not, huh? Isn't that right? Hopefully during this time, we have worked on our what? Relationship skills. Hmm? Well, 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 maybe not. Because now, you know, you tell me there's more domestic fights and all going on because, huh? <laughs> Relationships, huh? Relationships, not things, are what really what matter in life. Why do we keep allowing our relationships to get short-changed? I meant to call you. I meant to text you, huh? I meant to email you, huh? We short-change our relationships. And that is what really matters in life is our relationships with 
one another. Well, relationships, not things, are what really matters. And we keep allowing our relationships to get shortchanged because when our lives become overloaded, we start skimming relationally. We start cutting back on the time we spend in our relationships. We start cutting back on the energy, the attention that good relationships require. Whoa, good. Huh? Just stop by to remind you. We become too preoccupied, come on somebody, with making a living, moving up the corporate ladder, moving up in the social world and accomplishing our goals as if those were the point of life. And they are all right, but they are not totally the point of life. See, the point of life is learning to love, to love who? I've said it. God and people. Hello. Huh, that's the point, loving God. I love the Lord. Huh? I love my brothers and sisters and cousins and all I. Huh? We become too preoccupied with other things and neglect our relationships. They are not the point of life is learning to love, remember God and people. So life, I heard Charles Stanley say this, life minus love equals zero. Life minus what? Love equals zero. Hmm. Just want to remind you, Mother Teresa said, and I quote, it is not what you do, but how much love you put into something that matters. You know, sometimes people don't want to receive anything for you because they know your attitude is bad. It's not loving. They, they'll tell you, keep it. Huh? Because of our attitude and how we come over, huh? Isn't that right? It's not what you do, but how much love you put into it that what matters. Love is the secret of a great legacy. Well, here now, in our final moments of life, and especially when we see someone is about to transition, we all realize that relationships are what life is all, all about. Sometimes we start saying, I wish, I would have. I wish I could have done what more. I, 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 I procrastinated, huh? But you know, we, we have lost so many people during this period of time, this pandemic. We are finding out that our relationships haven't been what we wish they could have been because we haven't loved one another as we should. Wisdom is learning that truth sooner rather than later. What are you saying? Don't wait until it's too late. But I just want to remind you, like John, that we should love one another. Don't wait until it's too late to figure that out. Well, here now, I'm gonna just name five things right quick and not gonna go into detail on them. Five things, five keys to good relationships. And then we'll be on our way, five, five keys. First of all, 
You got to learn to give people a push. What are you saying? Barnabas became known as a great encourager because he encouraged the believers. It says in Acts chapter 11, verse 23. We ourselves remember Job said in Job 29, verse 24, when they were discouraged, I smiled. My look of approval was precious to them. Well, in our relationships, we just need to give people a what? Push. Have you given somebody a what? Push. Not, I didn't say it, try to tear them down, but you're trying to push them forward to be an encourager. That's why encourage your wife Encourage your husband, encourage your, your children, encourage your and relatives. What? Give each other a what? Push on the job. Give your colleagues a what? Push. Second, honor your word. It's another key to good relationships. Honor your word. The Bible, the Bible I'm talking about. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 3, sums it up and says, in the last day, men shall be truth breakers. But you don't have to fulfill that prophecy. See, if you say you'll do something, do it. Character is measured by action, not words. So be someone whose word has meaning. Always promising something, what you're going to do, and never honor your word in relationship. we we'll tear it down, huh? Third, hold your tongue. Woo! I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to. Uh, keys to good relationships. I said, one, you got to give people a push. And you got to honor your word, then you tell you, you got to what? Honor. Uh huh. Ho, ho. 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 What are you saying there? Hold your tongue. Always say less than you think. Huh? Huh? I said, always. Now you didn't discuss this this week when you're talking to each other. Amen. Huh? And you just don't have to go off on me and tell me everything you think about me. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh huh. Hold your what? Tongue. Remember, it says in Scripture, Proverbs 29, verse 11, a fool uttered all his mind. A wise person keep it, it in. And since how you speak is as important as what you say, always be kind and courteous. Hello, somebody. I'm trying to help somebody's relationship, all right? Give each other a push, honor your word, then what? Hold your tongue. Fourth, be cheerful. Mm-hmm. Solomon, whoo, stay in the word, Pastor. I am, I am. Solomon says in Proverbs 15, verse 13, in the message translation, a cheerful heart brings a smile. A sad heart makes it hard to get through the day. <laughs> so what I'm saying is don't dump your problems and all your disappointments on others. You got to learn something. You got to take them to God in prayer because I don't want to see you coming with all that heavy load. <laughs> I'm already down and you throwing it all on me. <laughs> huh? Isn't that right? Then you don't mind it a one or two times, Brother Willie. <laughs> but you, you, well, we got to learn to be what? Cheerful. And then fifth, and then when we finish, you got to learn to show genuine interest in others. People can tell and figure out if you are a fake. Huh? The Bible, stay there, Brother, stay there in the Bible. The Bible says in Romans 12, 
verses 15 through 16 in the message translation, laugh when they are happy, share tears when they are down. What are you saying? But you can only do that by taking the time to find out what's going on in their world. Show genuine interest. Sometimes you, you, you good God Almighty, huh? Look here, amen. Later this week, amen. She said, I, 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 told, I didn't feel like my husband was show, giving me genuine interest. I've been begging for it, amen, for over a year, huh? But when I served him with those divorce papers, all of a sudden he got interested. Huh? And she said, I said, I'm so glad you did that. But Reverend, it was too late. He should have been showing genuine interest all alone. You can only do this by taking the time to find out what's going on in other people's world. Keeping your relationship. Remember to what? Give each other a what? Push. Second, I said you got to what? Honor your word. Then I told you you got to learn to hold your tongue. And then I told you you got to learn to be what? Cheerful. And then I said you got to show genuine interest. For John says, I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen. 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 Glory. Amen. See, it wasn't anything new I see. It was just a reminder to what we already what? Know. Oh, right now, as I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, it's just a reminder that you need to come to Jesus while you have time. Just a reminder. A reminder that you might need to come and rededicate, recommit. A reminder that God loves you unconditionally. A reminder that the Lord will forgive you. A reminder that relationships are important. You have to work on them and not shortchange them. The invitation, come, commit yourself. There's nothing better in the chat. Knowing Jesus, send us. He will pick you up and turn. An email. Saying that I want to be a part of this church. You ought to know him. You ought to know him.
vowels to extend yeah. and yeah. yours to accept. Just give you some reminders, and especially about our relationships. Don't let them suffer. Hello? Amen. amen. You say, I'm talking to single people like me, married couples, amen. We got to work on our what? Relationships. My, my, my. All right. I, I have enjoyed being in service this morning. Yeah, I know I, know I have. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, then. Thank you. All these singles we have behind me. Y'all see these singles? Oh, they're, they're singing. Amen. Amen. You see all these great musicians up here playing that? Huh? Do y'all see all these great musicians? Amen. 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 We see the sound technicians. The... Amen. Hey, the media people. Yeah, all them up there. Amen. Yeah. Miss Shanae and Miss, amen, Miss Fran. All right, all right, all right. Amen. Amen. And we thanks be to God that our lead Ursha is in the house visiting. Amen. <laughs> Sister Pamela Sherman is in the house. Amen. Look here. It's all right to pop in. Yeah. You, we just can't take a big crowd. Amen. Amen. But if you want to pop in and sit and be a part of the, the audience, it's all right. Amen. Amen. Just wear your mask and just social distance. Amen. It'll be all right. Praise God. Amen. All right, then, and the Wades, amen. Brother and sister Wade, in the house, love you. All right, sickle cell, amen. We're going to keep that organization, what you are doing is precious. Ooh, you putting your heart, soul, and spirit into this, amen. I know you are keeping it going, amen. And it's hard to keep an organization going. When you got to always be out there, you know, providing and then try to provide funding at the same time, it gets difficult. And you know how the city, they don't give you all what you want and ask, do they? You, well, see that she bowed her head and shook his Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. So we as a, as a people, it affects who? African Americans, sickle cell. Amen. Let us contribute to that organization, the Sickle Cell of Texas, the Mark Thomas Foundation, amen. For it could be you or someone in your family dealing with sickle cell, and they are here to offer an helping hand. All right, enjoy your camp week, camp celebration. We know it's gonna be great. Oh yeah, we'll think about you, that candle, in memory and honor of those who have departed and those who are still living, who are carrying on, our children, our youth, and our adults. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and help us to continue to remember that we are to what? Love one another. Amen. Now, next Sunday is the first Sunday of uh, August. We will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Okay, so get your elements ready there at the house. And we will partake of these elements as a church family. All right. Thank you all who tune in and listening. And thank you, Brother Don Tisdale, for last week. Amen. Ah, oh, what a word. Truth versus lies. Hey, hey. All right, then. He laid it out there, didn't he? Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Tisdale. All right. Come on, let us close out now. Jesus, let us stand. Be exalted, Jesus. Jesus. Your name be praised. I said, Jesus, we give you all the glory for you have done great things. Yeah.
one more time. Come on, one more time. Come on, come on, church. Jesus, call it. Be what he ain't God, you have done great things. Help us to do even greater things in our relationships with one another. We realize now that relationships and not things are what really matter in life. So, oh God, we go forth to work on and improve our relationships with family members, colleagues, oh God, our children, our cousins. For, oh Lord, when we all get to heaven, if our relationships are not right down here, there won't be a day of rejoicing up there. So I'll go for it. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever as we say one more time, Jesus. You are dismissed. Sister Wade.